Zebra mussels is a native species to Europe and Asia. In that fact, it's the Black and Caspian Sea area. It's a species that can be problematic. It has a free-swimming larvae. When they reproduce, the little larvae, it's tiny, microscopic, can't see it, swims around in the water and it gets sucked into water pipes and then it attaches to the sides of pipes and things like that and starts to grow and it can clog pipes. So it's problematic, it's a nuisance species. The problem we have in this country is it was introduced uh, in the late 80s, early 1990s, through probably barge traffic. The, they basically got into ballast waters of ships coming across from Europe, and when they got to the Great Lakes, they released the water to exchange their, their ballast waters, and all of a sudden, these villagers are now in the water. They have gotten into areas where they've really done a lot of damage. They outcompete native mussels by getting thousands of them on a native shell and then basically taking all their food away from them. One of the ways that they're really problematic in the Great Lakes is just water intake structures. They're really damaging to that. If you've ever been around a beach with them, they're also very sharp. You can cut your fingers, your feet. They're just unwanted species. It's an exotic species. We don't want anything to do with them in this country, and so we want to prevent the spread of them. Zebra mussels are currently found in Kentucky in a lot of our uh, larger rivers. Um, we've been fortunate enough to keep them out of a good majority of our lakes here, so it's really important to make sure that we dampen any type of movement, uh, human-mediated movement, um, into our lakes and resource systems where they're not currently found. Yeah, you can see, and you can see this one really good, the, the growth lines on it. One of the biggest um, modes of transport for these invasive species is human-mediated movement, and uh, we want to cut down on that vector of transport as much as possible. So it's really important that we um, do all that we can to, to slow down any progression or any instance where these um, mollusks can be introduced into previously um, untouched water resources. You know, most people in the state are aware of these. It's not like this is new. You know, this is, these things have been around. It's just that, you know, we haven't seen them transported in the moss ball. That's the difference. So it's just a new vector to introduce them. Now they're being found in uh, a rather common aquarium um, and house decor item uh, known as a moss ball. They can also be known as beta buddies, sometimes shrimp buddies, some other product names. I mean, this is a previously undocumented vector of transport, and so keep in mind that is you should never ever dump anything from a bait bucket or an aquarium into a native waterway. That's going to be one of the main modes of transport for some of these species um, that could potentially be introduced into um, areas where they're not currently established. In terms of disinfecting um, and disposing of those right now, the current recommendations um, for anybody who's bought, say, Merima moss balls or Beta Buddy balls, um, is one of three things. The easiest that I think is to, to probably freeze those uh, for 24 hours or longer, or you can boil those uh, or bleach them as well. And so that's one of the three ways um, that we're currently recommending that those be disposed of properly. Um, and never ever, again, dump them into a water resource, dispose of them properly in the trash.